when we are talking about setting up a golden gate environment we are assuming that there is a source set up available in which there is a database already available and we have installed the golden gate software since this course is golden gate for oracle we will specifically look at what should be done in a database which is oracle to configure the golden gate to make it work the golden gate software would have to access the database for which a db user would have to be created you might be wondering why would golden gate log into the database please remember golden gate is going to read from read log files that are generated and whenever the redo is being looked at it will only have information about an object id the information about object id and the object name will be available inside the dictionary so golden gate would have to log into the database to get the information about the object name for which we need to create a user please refer to the ppt in which i have given details about what are the privileges that are required for the user similarly on the target side also please remember golden gate will have to go and perform dml in the target so assuming we have a target db where also we will have golden gate installed from the source trail would come into the target golden gate has to read through the trail and perform dml into the target database for that purpose also <coughs> there is a user who would have the privileges to perform dml into the target database so exact details about what is it that the user needs is detailed in the ppt deck but please understand the first thing we need to do is to ensure we create the database user on both sides the next step is to configure supplemental logging now by default whenever the database is writing to the read logs it just keeps capturing information about the row id that got modified and the changed value now as far as the read log file is concerned it is sufficient because it can when it is doing the recovery it will have the row id information from from which it can apply but when the same data has to be replicated into a different database it needs the exact information about the primary key of a column for example if there is an employee table in which there are different employees and a dml is occurring on an employee 1001 assuming that the employee id is the primary key for whom the salary is changed from 3000 to 5000 when this is captured in the redo and sent across here when it is getting applied it needs to know that the 1001st employee id is the value is the row for which the value is changed so it needs the additional information of primary key also to be logged which is enabled by enabling supplemental logging at the database level this will ensure that the database is capable of performing supplemental logging and immediately next you would enable tran data for the tables that are involved in the replication process please remember i might have for example 1000 tables as part of my application inside the source database but maybe i am not interested in sending across everything maybe only 100 tables out of these 1000 need to be replicated to the target then using golden gate command you will add tran data for these 100 tables so that the read log has this information about the primary key to be logged for these 100 tables so that's the next step of enabling tran data for tables through golden gate ggsci command interface through which those 100 tables whenever they are manipulated the read log will also have the 
primary key information logged in the read log files. The fourth step in the setup is to configure the manager process. Please remember the manager process should be started and running if you need to start any extract or replicate in both the environments. Specifically about what is to be configured in the manager process is given in the PPT deck. But the manager process is like the root process for Golden Gate, which will have information about on which port the manager is running, which are the free ports that are available on the source, which the manager process can use to start processes, etc. are enabled by the manager process as such. And in case we are having a heterogeneous environment wherein the source is a different database and the target is a different database in terms of the vendor for example oracle to mysql or oracle to db2 or oracle to sql server what we need to take care is the mapping about from the source to target how are they going to get mapped? So what you would do is, you will create a source definition in the source database and ship it across and keep it in the target database. Similarly, if you are creating a target definition which will give details about how the target tables are mapped you will create the definition and put it in the source so that the source will be aware of what are the target tables or you will have to configure the source definition and put it in the target so that the mapping information is clear between the two databases and this is done using a utility called defgen DefGen utility will enable you to create these source definition and target definitions through which you can bring about the mapping. Obviously, data type mismatches could be there, can be defined in the DefGen. At a later part in the course, I will show you how DefGen can be used to create these mapping files. Once you have done all this, we have ensured our environment is now ready to perform replication. Thereafter, we can go ahead with the further topics of identifying how to perform the initial sync up, how do we capture changes or what do we capture changes on, how do we send it across in terms of extract, pump and replicate process and how does the replicate process the trail on the target and update it into the database.